Hi there! Today I'm going to demonstrate how I build the beach bases for my Tyranids and Stormtroopers. If you do a Google search for beach basing, you get pretty much one style. Half sand, half ocean. This conveys the theme well, but it doesn't allow much variety. Because I overthink these things, it seems weird to me when you have an entire army and somehow they're all standing right on the shoreline. I decided I was going to try a different approach, and found this photo. What we have is a beach at low tide, leaving tide pools on the sand as well as rocks sticking out of the sand. So that's the general mix I'm going to use. So the first thing I'm going to do to my base is cut out a section where I want there to be water. If I want a small puddle, I'll just carve out a hole and build a crater under it with putty. But here I want a significant area to be filled with water, so I trace an outline and then score it until I cut through the plastic. Next, I mix up some putty and apply it to the underside of the base to act as a spacer, then reattach the section I cut out. I use a wetted sculpting tool to press down the putty a bit, just to get a bit of a slope, but I'm not worrying about getting a perfect surface at this point. Around the rim, I use superglue to secure the cutout in place. While that's drying, I mix up some more putty, stick it to the base, and use my sculpting tool to turn it into a small mound. This is just to add a bit of surface irregularity and make the base a little more three-dimensional. Next is rock. I have a sheet of quarter-inch cork board, from which I tear off a small piece and glue it down with PVA. PVA takes a long time to dry, so I put the base in a cheap food dehydrator set to 60 degrees Celsius. This dramatically reduces the dry time. While the base is drying, I'm going to do some very simple sculpting. I flatten two balls of putty onto a smooth work surface. On the first, I etch five notches in a star pattern, producing a sand dollar. On the second, I use my sculpting tool to make five divots in a star pattern in the middle. I then make a second set of five divots at the edge, offset so that each outer divot is between two inner divots. These divots form a guide, and by connecting the dots with a hobby knife, I can cut out a starfish. I then use the sculpting tool to add random divots to the surface, giving it a bit of texture. With the sand dollar and starfish complete, I set them aside to cure and retrieve the base. Now I'm going to smooth out the transition from the main level to the lowered section. This just requires smoothing some fresh putty along the transition. In the middle, I decide to make it a more gradual transition, so I add more putty and smooth it out. On the underside, I add a bit of superglue to help secure the cutout. Superglue over putty forms a much stronger bond than putty alone. While that cures, I can work on the rock. I use a pair of hobby clippers to cut the cork, giving it a shallower profile around the edges and a more random surface texture. I particularly focus on disrupting the straight borders and flat top surface. I save the pieces I cut off so I can use them later to make smaller rocks on other bases. Because cork is so porous, it helps to seal it before painting, so I brush on a generous coating of PVA diluted one-to-one -one with water and set it aside to dry. Once the cork is sealed and the putty cured, it's time for sand. I use a basing mix composed of sand from a hardware store, along with fine, medium, and coarse ballast from Woodland Scenics. The variety gives it more interesting texture than sand alone. So I brush PVA onto the entire base and remove the excess. I don't want any deep pools of glue, just a thin coating so that the sand can stick. When the glue is applied, I dip the base in my sand mixture, then flick the bottom of it to remove excess. Now that the base is sanded, I can attach the starfish and sand dollar with PVA. I actually realized after doing this that I put the starfish right where I intended for a model's foot to go, so I moved it slightly. Anyways, with that done, I primed the model white. The next step is to dilute Army Painter's soft tone one-to-one -one with water, and wash the sand and sand dollar. Once that's dry, I apply the same mix in a second layer over the area I intend to cover with water effects. The slightly darker color gives the sand a wet look. At this point, I'm done with painting the sand. To finish off the sand dollar, I brush some white paint over the top, avoiding the notches. Next, I use Viejo model color Beige Red to base coat the starfish, being careful to avoid getting any on the sand. While that dries, I take Viejo model color Neutral Gray and use it to base coat the rock. Because the sand creeps up the sides of the cork, this is pretty forgiving since there's no obvious transition between sand and rock. When that's dry, I take Viejo model color Ivory and use it to dry brush both the starfish and the rock. I now use Army Painter's Strong Tone to wash the starfish. This requires some care because applying too much will cause it to run into the sand. I wick away any excess before it has a chance to dry. After that, I use Army Painter Dark Tone to wash the rock. Alright, time for another beach essential. I got a lifetime supply of actual seashells for about $10 US. I glue one shell down with superglue. 
I'm not using PVA here because many shells won't stay upright under their own weight, so I need something that will dry more quickly. While that dries, I'm going to add some seaweed. In actuality, these are strands of dried lichen, commonly sold for terrariums. After separating out pieces I like, I soak them in diluted PVA, then apply them to the base. If a piece is really saturated in the glue mixture, I blot it off on a piece of paper towel first. The last basing addition is to make it look like moss is growing on the rock, which I do by mixing green flock with PVA and applying this paste-like mixture to the rock. Probably should have used more glue here, it's difficult to work with if it's too dry. While the PVA dries, I get the dark tone back out and apply it to the shell. This helps define its detail and keeps its appearance consistent with the painted parts of the base. And then when the PVA is fully dry, I apply dark tone to the flocking on the rock. That's it for the painting, so I'm going to apply a layer of thinned black to the rim of the base. The tricky part here is getting inside the rim of the base in the sunken area, so I do this cautiously. Alright, now for water. I'm using Woodland Scenics water effects here. Note that this is an unusual technique. Normally to fill a volume, you use a pourable thin water product, like Woodland Scenics Realistic Water or Viejo Still Water. The problem I have with those is that they tend to shrink significantly and creep out of where they're placed due to surface tension. Water Effects is a thick, gel-like product, so it stays exactly where it's put and doesn't shrink much. I spread it around with a worn-out brush, trying to keep a level surface. To smooth it out, I dip the brush in water and lightly run it across the surface of the water effect as needed. Once applied, it will take several days to dry fully, potentially up to a week depending on humidity. I consider this a zen-like exercise in patience. Nah, just kidding, I throw it in the dehydrator for six hours and it's done. Now that the base is dry, it's time for varnish. I use Pledge Floor Gloss for protection, and AK Interactive Ultra Matte for finish, both applied by airbrush. After the pledge, the base has a very wet, shiny appearance. The ultra matte kills the shine, but look what it's done to the water. The surface has turned cloudy. To fix this, I brush some pledge over the water effects and leave it to dry. Once it dries, the water is back to being shiny, while the rest of the base is a nice matte. That's it for the basing. At this point, I'll drill a hole and pin my model to the base. It may seem like a lot of steps, but in practice it goes pretty quickly, especially when working on several at once. Feel free to comment if you have any questions or if there's anything you'd like to see next, and thanks for watching.